Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today, we're going to learn about a concept called simple interest. Well, what is simple interest? Interest is money paid or earned for the use of money. What is principle? Well, besides the school principle, this type of principle is money you have deposited in a bank or borrowed from a bank. When you use a credit card, you're borrowing money from a bank. Thus, you have to pay interest to use that money. If you're getting a mortgage or a car loan, that also comes with interest. The principal is that amount you're borrowing. The interest is the money you're paying to use that money. Or, if you're saving money and you put the money in the bank, well, the bank's going to use that money to save themselves, um, and they'll pay you interest um, to use that money. Now, we have a simple interest formula that we can solve for, where I is interest, P is the principal, R is the rate as a decimal, and T is the time, and the key here is that time has to be in years. Let's take a look at our first example. Jenny puts $1,560 into a savings account. The account pays 2.5% simple interest. How much interest will she earn in three years? Let's start first by defining our variables. I is interest, and that's the thing we don't know, so we'll just be keeping that as a variable. P is the principal. Well, the principal, remember, is the money that you put in or borrow. In this case, you're putting in $1,560. R is the rate, and this rate is 2.5%, but remember, this has to be written as a decimal. So you're going to move your decimal place two points to the left, and this rate then becomes 0 0.025 to be written as the decimal. Your T is time in years, and it's given to you in years, so that's going to be 3. Now, start with I equals P times R times T. Interest is what you're solving for. Your principal was $1,560 times 0 0.025 times 3. When you multiply these numbers together, I equals 117 or $117. So your answer, $117. One of the keys in solving this type of problem is defining your variables so you know what you're solving for. So starting with your list of the variables becomes very important so you're able to use the formula correctly. Let's move on. Jose's savings account pays 3.25% interest. He has $1,200 in his account. How much interest will he earn in nine months? Nine months in bold, because that's going to be really important that we do the right thing there. Let's once again start off by going with our variables. I equals, P equals, R equals, T equals. Well, our interest is what we're solving for, so we'll just be keeping that as an I in our formula. The P is the principal, the $1,200 he has in his account. The rate is 3.25%, but again, remember, we need to move our decimal point over twice to the left so that we have 0 0.0325. Our time here is nine months. Now, remember back that T has to be in years. Well, in order to get this into years, think, how many months are in a year? Well, 12. How many of those months do I have? 
9. So my time is 9 twelfths of a year, or I can simplify that and call it 3 fourths of a year, or even 0 0.75 of a year, 75 hundredths of a year. Well, now I have everything I need. So we'll start with I equals PRT, the interest we're solving for. The principal is $1,200. Our rate is 0 0.0325. And our time, 3 fourths or 9 twelfths or 0 0.75. You can use any of those three. When you multiply these numbers together, I equals 29 and 25 hundredths or $29.25 five cents is the interest he has earned. One of the key mistakes that I see on this type of problem, t equals nine months, we have to get that into years, whether it's nine twelfths, three fourths, or seventy five hundredths of a year. That's what you need to do. As we move on to example three, Mrs. Hanover borrows $1,400 at a rate of 5.5% per year. How much simple interest will she pay if it takes eight months to repay the loan? Let's once again start off by defining our variables. I equals, P equals, R equals, T equals. We're once again looking for simple interest. The principal is not only the money you can put into the bank, but the money you can borrow, so it's $1,400. Our rate, 5.5%. Get that as a decimal by moving the decimal place over two spots to the right to get 0 0.055. And your time here is eight months. And remember, time has to be in years. So this can be 8 over 12, which, if you wanted to simplify, 4 sixths if you divide by 2, or if you divide by 4, you could get 2 thirds, which as a decimal is 0 0.6, repeating. Now we're ready to use our formula. So I equals P R T. Our interest is going to equal our principal of $1,400 times our rate, 0 0.055, times, I'm just going to write in 8 over 12 as a reminder that that's 8 months out of 12 in one year. You could write it as 2 thirds, 4 sixths, 0 0.66666 repeating. Either way, when you solve this out and multiply it out, you would get 51 and three, 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 repeating. Now to finish this, let's look at our pennies place, or also known as our hundredths place, and the one next to it. Is the three in the thousands place going to round the three in the hundredths or pennies place up? No. So our final answer is interest equals 51 and 33 hundredths, or since we're dealing with money, $51 and 33 cents. Again, remember to move your decimal place over for your percentage to get as a decimal and keep your months into years by writing it over 12. In example four, we're going to take a look at example how interest can be applied with a credit card. An office manager charged $425 worth of office supplies on a credit card. The credit card has an interest rate of 9 and 9 tenths percent. How much money will he owe at the end of one month if he makes no other charges on the card and does not make a payment? Let's set up our variables again. The interest we still need to look for. We need to find how much interest he's going to be charged. The principal is the amount of money he's borrowing, which is $425. The rate is 9 and 9 tenths percent. And again, 
move that decimal place over twice to the left, and you get 0 0.099. Your time is one month, which is actually one twelfth of a year. Now, let's put this in to our interest formula, I equals P R T, the interest we're solving for still. The principal is $425. The rate is 0 0.099. And our time is 1 twelfth. When you multiply these together, our interest being charged for the one month is 3 decimal point five zero six two five. Now, that's the interest being charged. We have to add this back to the principal to see how much money he will owe because he has to pay or she has to pay the $425 and the interest. So $425 and no cents plus three dollars fifty cents with this little bit of extra hanging out it's going to equal four hundred twenty eight dollars fifty cents and this extra now what are we going to do with the extra look at that pennies place which is the zero look one to the right of it and is that six going to round the zero up Yes, it's above 5, so our final answer is $428.51. As we move on to the last example, Maggie is taking out a student loan for $2,600. She plans on paying off the loan in three years. At the end of three years, Maggie will have paid $390 in interest. What is the simple interest rate on the student loan? Well, in this last example, we're actually solving not for interest, but for the rate. So let's start this as we started every problem so far by defining our variables I, P, R, and T. We actually know the interest this time. We know the interest is going to be $390. We also know that she took out the principal, which is $2,600. We're actually solving for the rate this time, so that's just going to stay R. And our time is three years. And since our time needs to be in years, and it already is, we do not need to do anything more to that. So let's go to our formula, I equals PRT. Our interest was 390 our principal was 2,600. Our rate is R, and our time is 3. Let's go ahead and simplify what we can on the right side of the formula. We can look at this 2,600 and this 3 and multiply them together. The 390 is going to stay on the left side equals, again, 2,600 times 3 is going to equal 7,800, and we're still left with our R. Well, now we have a one-step equation we need to solve for. We want to get our R alone. So if we divide by 7,800 on both sides, this cancels. We're left with R equals on the right side, and 390 divided by 7,800 gets us 0 0.05. Now, that is our interest rate. To finish the question, though, let's get this back to a percent. Move this decimal place over twice to the right, and we end up with 5%. So on a student loan of $2,600, paid off in three years, 
with $390 in interest. Maggie's interest rate was 5%.